um, and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be setting up a frame buffer of our own. Um, a frame buffer is a combination of color data as well as depth data and something called a stencil buffer, which we'll be looking at in the next video. The benefit of setting up our own frame buffer is firstly, we can um, treat the whole screen like an image and apply uh, post-processing effects to it, as well as we, uh, it becomes a lot easier to put um, other overlays on top of the screen, basically. So let's have a look at this. Firstly, um, in the initializer function for the app, I have broken some of these sections out because it was getting a bit big. Um, so this helps to organize it. The core of the code happens in this um, OpenGL initializer. I've added another shader uh, for two dimensional stuff because basically we are going to render the whole frame kind of off screen to a texture and then take that texture and basically splatter onto the screen. So we're gonna need to pass in um, we're going to need to take two dimensional positions and texture coordinates and draw those. Um, we'll have a look at that shader in a second, but let's keep going here. We also need to create our frame buffer, which I'll do down here. Oh, right. So well, first of all, we create a, a frame buffer object FBO and bind it. And then we need to set up the color buffer, the depth buffer, and the stencil buffer. So for the color buffer, we can just create a texture and uh, bind it in. And we're gonna store it in um, RGB format. Okay, but um, this is the important thing. We are not going to load any data in when we create this. We're going to create just a blank texture with no data. That data will come from our rendering. Huh, okay. So this is the other important step here. We have created our texture. We need to tell the frame buffer that this texture is what we're using as our color attachment. Notice it says color attachment zero because we can actually have multiple color attachments to a buffer. Um, we'll be looking at that in a future video when we do bloom effects. Okay, so we bind our color buffer in as the color attachment then we need the depth and stencil buffer. So typically color buffer is 32 bits and depth and stencil are kind of squished together into another 32 bit buffer where the first 24 bits store the depth value and the last eight bits store the stencil value. So we're kind of sticking two buffers together and this is a standard uh, workflow for OpenGL. Right, uh, the other thing is that we are creating not a texture, but a render buffer. So the difference, both a texture and a render buffer um, store information, store numbers, but a texture is slightly less optimized because um, it has to be sampled, it has to be stretched, minified or magnified. Whereas a render buffer is just you know written to and read from, but not interpolated which makes sense because when we're storing depth information, there's no reason that we're going to be sampling that. We would typically render a texture and then possibly stretch or squash that texture, but that's after the depth test has been performed, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, the step, so over here, we had to tell the frame buffer to take this texture as our color attachment and now we tell the render buffer to take, oh, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we've bound our render buffer and we need to allocate some storage. So we say, yep, we're using 32 bits and this is how it's being partitioned. And it's 640 by 480 and that storage is allocated similar to above where we had text image uh, 2D. Right. Um, then we unbind our render buffer. And this is the step where we tell our frame buffer that um, it is the depth and stencil attachment. 
Okay, so that's it. So we're done with that. Um, let's have a look at the rendering section. So now, before the rendering was done just in one step, we would just draw everything. Now what we're going to do is first of all, we bind our uh, frame buffer object that we created and we reset everything and then we draw. So we draw everything and instead of drawing on screen, this gets drawn to the color attachment of our uh, frame buffer object. Then in the second pass, we bind frame buffer zero, which is the default frame buffer, which OpenGL creates for us. Um, so this one is attached to the screen. This one is off screen. So then we clear everything and I've skipped a few steps, but our HUD object has a reference to the color attachment, the texture from our frame buffer object. So when we draw that, it is actually drawing, oh, sorry, not HUD. I'm getting ahead of myself. As a matter of fact, I'll just get rid of that for now. So uh, what we're doing is drawing the screen. So we'll just test this. Hopefully it works. Uh, yes, this is drawing the screen as normal, but it's not actually drawing the screen. It's drawing an image of the game that's been thrown onto the screen. So how does this work? We have self screen. And when we go to create objects that has been created down here, um, I made a textured quad, like a textured rectangle object. It takes in uh, a center and whoops, a width and a height, as well as uh, a reference to the texture object. And it's going to, it's a two dimensional rectangle. So we're going to use our 2D shader, which we're going to look at in a second. Cool. So let me go to textured quad in its creation code. It's really simple. We just have X, Y coordinates and texture coordinates here. Great. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy here. This is just the same sort of um, code that we've been using before. Um, and when we draw, well, we use the shader, which was passed in our two dimensional shader. We bind in this case, the color buffer from before, and then we draw. So that is just drawing. And again, it doesn't look like it's doing too much, but if we, um, let's have a look at the 2D shader. So we'll start with the vertex shader. We have a two dimensional position and vertex texture coordinate. Uh, the position gets passed through uh, with X and Y as normal, then setting Z to zero, which is at the depth level of the screen. And again, this is the default. For if there were any transformations, we would have to include this one. The ramp, we still have to include that one anyway, because we're using a four dimensional system. Um, okay, and we pass through the texture coordinate with no alteration. We look at the fragment tech, uh, fragment shader at the moment. So uh, we're taking in a texture coordinate. We've got um, a, a sampler, which is in this case, the screen, which was rendered. And we just sample from that and pass it through. So again, it's not doing anything at the moment, but let's, um, let's have some fun here. So let's say we take the R, G, and B components and average those out. And then we output that to the screen. It becomes black and white. So this is some post, post processing. If you can imagine back in time when the first monkeys were first discovered, well, you don't have to imagine because it's here. So the power of graphics. Cool. So we can do some basic post-processing effects um, and we can get a little more complicated with that. But another cool thing is just double checking myself here. I think this will work. I think this will work just fine. 
um, we could also draw a like a HUD, a heads up display over the whole screen to kind of frame the edges. So um, what I did is I just did a Google search for like HUD frame and got an image and um, opened that up in GIMP and just removed the center. So it's uh, opaque. And let's just see if this works. That's cool. Okay, so what I'm doing, we can see first I draw the screen and then on top of that, I draw um, the HUD frame. And um, as you can see, I have disabled um, depth testing so that I can draw these things on top of each other, no problem, because it's just a few objects and I'm controlling the draw order, so that's all good. Um, yeah, uh, if you, yeah. Let's let's have a little look at that. So um, what I did to create this effect is I pretty much made another object called Simple Material, which instead of having a diffuse and specular texture, just has a single texture. Um, and it's a .png, and I used this convert alpha to make parts of it see-through. So this uh, Pygames default image loader, convert, um, does not include the alpha channel. I learned that the hard way. Um, but yes, this just takes a single image. And yeah. Um, so then. Right, so um, here I create the texture and then I create the HUD object, that's just a texture quad at the center of the screen, width and height of two, so it, you know, two each, uh, one unit each way, goes over the whole screen. And uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. Right, so that's it. Um, and yeah, as, no, as always, uh, the code will be linked in the video description, so you can grab it, go more in depth in it. And yeah, that's it for now. All right, bye.